El primer toro de la tarde, Carbonero. The first bull of the afternoon, Carbonero. Carbonero means coal salesman. Cape passes of Veronica. Now he moves in. Another Veronica, a Veronica, a half Veronica, and she fixes the ball as he moves away. A mild ovation, a mild ovation for Velasquez. and the bull goes to its knees, approaches the picador. Velasquez with a Veronica. Velasquez uh, terminator, the bull showed a weakness in the fore knees and would not charge truly, so Velasquez ended the series of passes. Velasquez asks the picadors be removed. It's not very frequent that a matador will ask the picadors be removed after only one pick has been placed. Here they allow three picks. In some arenas they allow four and five. Seldom are the picadors removed after one pick. wins the gold sword. The best pick of the afternoon, a gold watch. The best pair of banderillas wins a gold watch. The banderilla was almost trapped. He only placed one banderilla. off with a series of right hand passes derechazos, two wonderful derechazos by Antonio Velasquez. 
Now he puts the muleta, the red cloth, behind his back as he inches his way forward toward the bull. Spread eagles, stands still, motionless, moving only the red cloth, inches his way forward again towards the bull. A, ayudado a high pass with the right hand. A pase de pecho, a chest pass by Antonio. Then a choppy pass as he moves to the bull's left. A pase de pecho by Antonio, whose mother died earlier this week, wearing the black band on his left arm. Velasquez with an ayudado por alto, a high pass. Now a chest pass, pase de pecho, inching his way close. Chops the bull off and fixes him as he walks away. A right hand pass as he took the bull on from a distance. Another right hand pass. A third right hand pass. Wonderful that he chases by Antonio as he moves in close to the horns. Then he cuts the bull off with a remate. with a cape in back of him, holding both hands, moves forward. Now he moves the cape to his right hand, the red cloth, ayudado por alto, a high pass by Antonio. Now he's going to work this, the most dangerous pass of them, the left hand pass, the naturales. In this, he does not have the help of the sword. The left hand pass, a natural, another natural, very good. Antonio, flat-footed, makes another natural. The only sound is Antonio gets closer with the natural. Four naturales. Five naturales. He must end the series of passes, but he's going on. A right hand pass into a change of hands. Antonio went for, there's too much breeze Right at this moment, he went to have his muleta, the red cloth, watered. They pour water on it, then they rub it in the sand a little to weight it down. Next to the bulls, wind is your worst enemy in the arena. Antonio wants that gold sword. The Piedras Negras bulls are the killer bulls of Mexico. They have accounted for more matadores than any other, than all the other farms put together in Mexico. The bull paws the ground. That is not a good sign. It's a sign of treachery. But Antonio moves him with a left hand pass. Another left hand pass. And this time Antonio loses it, the muleta and the bull goes into the ground as he rips the muleta to shreds. Back to the attack now, Antonio with a high right hand pass. He's trying to work the left hand pass in Naturales. Antonio is getting a lot out of the drill. Está sacando mucho, as they say, ¿verdad? Right? Sí, tiene mucho entusiasmo, Antonio. Very enthusiastic, as they say. Ventilation was for that series of beautiful Naturales. Left hand pass by Antonio. Exposes his body as Mano Latina, one Mano Latina. And the music went to work with uh, Diana. Now Antonio is on his knees, working low right in front of the bull's horns. He moves the bull over. Or he does a desplante. Antonio kneels before the bull, turns his back, pulls his mouth and sort away as he does a desplante, kneeling in front of the bull. Everything that Antonio has done may go to nothing within the next few seconds. Depends on how he works with the sword. Bull is squared. Four paws together. No, not the right paws a little behind the left. The paws have to be together. The hoofs have to be together. The four hoods. Antonio sights, moves in. He misses. Pinchazo. Four paws must be together. You, 
can't get them together, you're running a big gamble. They strike bone, such as Antonio did. Antonio sets himself, sights again. The moment of truth. The bull lowers his head, refuses to stand still. Antonio sighting, he goes in. Much of Velasquez's work went for nothing, and he was not able to make a clean kill on his second attempt, and he needed assistance from a member of his quadrilla to administer the coup de grace. El segundo toro de la tarde, Churumbelo. The second bull of the afternoon, Churumbelo. Churumbelo is a minstrel from Spain. series of Cape passes. Here is Rafael Rodriguez out in the arena now, facing the ball. Rafael Rodriguez. Rafael Rodriguez. First Veronica, the second Veronica. This is a very active ball. The third Veronica, very smooth by Rodriguez. The fourth Veronica. Now he's moving in. A fifth Veronica. Another Veronica. And he has to call the bull to turn him around. Another Veronica by Rodriguez. And a half Veronica as he ends a series of initial Cape passes. Above us, aren't they, Ray? Rodriguez is the fifth ranking matador in the world. You seem nervous this morning. It's a good sign. Picador's ordered out. Picador is ordered out. Alfredo Leal. Alquite, Alfredo Leal makes the quite. Alfredo Leal, he's half Arabic, half Mexican. Tall, handsome fellow, very graceful. One of the most graceful matadores I've ever seen anywhere. Keith 
as the senior, the man fighting the bull makes the first kita, a series of kita as he takes the bull away from the horse. Then the next in line makes the kitas. They have to alternate. Grace or motion. Now he toys with the bull's horn. Very good for the tourists, but that is not artistic bullfighting. Then he makes a terrific right hand pass as he pushes the bull of horns past his legs. Another similar pass. Treachery, not necessarily cowardice, it's treacherous. squared. And Rodriguez missed on his first attempt to kill the bull. His assistants should have warned Rafael that, that the bull moved, moved his forehoof. And another miss for Rafael Rodriguez. At this point, Rodriguez is just flinging himself in in desperation. He can't hit the mark, he's disgusted with himself, he's desperate. His last attempt, there was no rhyme or reason for it. He just threw himself in hoping that it would hit. No olviden el cartelazo del próximo domingo. Luis Procona, José Ramón Tirado y Jaime Bravo, el próximo domingo. Don't forget, next Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m., another outstanding card featuring Luis Brocona, Ramon Tirado, and Jaime Bravo with bulls from Santa Marta. Pajarero, the third bull of the afternoon, Pajarero. Pajarero means birdman.
Birdman is a giant animal. Close to the 500 kilo mark and he looks like a racehorse as he rushes across the ring and around it. This bull will be fought by Juan Cipetti. It's too bad that Rafael Rodriguez had so much trouble finally dispatching his bull. with a cape. Another Veronica, beautiful. A rhythmic Veronica, drawing the Oles. Another Veronica by Silvetti. A fourth Veronica, half Veronica, beautifully. And he draws an ovation. As the end of the series of Veronica, the initial cape passes when you fight a bull. The booing is caused by the entrance of the Pecadores. The crowd, of course, preferring to see more cape work. Silvetti is one of the top three in Mexico. Humberto Moro, who will follow him, and Manuel Capetillo, who is not here, are disputing Silvetti's claim as the number one of Mexico. The first pick was missed. The bull thrusting into the padding around the horse, uh, carrying the picador around up against the barrero. Picador has placed the lance. The bull continues to hit the padding on the, the horse, an indication of a very brave and fierce bull. Picador is ordered out. Humberto Moro elected not to make a sir any passes of Quites. Passes with the cape on the Quite, rather, because he was ordered not to do so by the matador in charge of this bull, who is Juan Silvetti. Banderilla is being placed now. This is Carlos Arruza's old standby, Javier Cerrillo. It looked like he had a good pair placed, but one bounced out. Silvetti asks permission to kill the bull. Silvetti did not dedicate the bull to anyone. Moved around the position by one of Silvetti's ass assistants, Alberto Aguilar Aguilita. Now Silvetti takes the muleta, starts his faena, the final phase. A low chopping pass, another chopping pass of the right hand, bringing the head down. Now a pase de pecho, a right hand pass, beautiful right hand, another beautiful right derechazo by Silvetti, another derechazo by Silvetti as he begins to work fine, smooth, and close. Juanito offers the right hand again. Inches his way forward in front of the horns. Flicks the cloth. A right hand pass by Juanito. Another right hand pass. And then he cuts the bull off. Fixes him. Stands still momentarily. Then walks away. Juventus stands motionless. Then moves away as the bull went into him. He moved him with a right hand pass, a chest pass, a right hand pass, a change of hands. Now Silvetti fixes his sword in the muleta as he inches forward again to face, to face his enemy. A very good bull from Piedras Negras. Bull comes and Silvetti works on a not too well executed right hand pass at the rechazo. Silvetti again facing his foe flicks the cloth, offering the right side. The bull moves towards the cloth, stands momentarily observing, then moves in as Silvetti executes a right hand pass. A fair right hand pass. It started to draw an ole, but the, how the crowd hesitated as the pass lost its rhythm. Juanito stands in front of the bull inches his way forward to the muleta, the red cloth behind him. Now he offers the right hand to the bull. 
Bull observes, sets himself, squares, prepares to charge. The bull's head was too high. Another two head held high, spoiling the, the motion of the right hand pass for Juanito. Juanito offering the right hand again. That time it worked. It was a fairly good right hand pass, not to the full length, a change of hands. And Silvetti ends it with a passe de pecho, a chest pass, and walks away to a mild hand clapping. in an excellent kill on the third bull of the afternoon. Doctor Martín del Campo, lo necesitan urgentemente por teléfono. Doctor Martín del Campo, lo necesitan urgentemente por teléfono. El cuarto toro de la tarde, Marchenero. The fourth bull of the day, Marchenero. Marchenero is one who does a lot of marching. six bulls in one afternoon. The other two matadors had a wage dispute with the promoter, refused to go on. Moro said, I'll save the show. He went on and fought and killed six bulls. He cut a, a total of uh, six ears and two tails that afternoon. Sorteo this morning, Umberto Moro looked haggard and tired as though he did not get much of a night's sleep. Here today, who has taken a trophy in this arena in previous years. Certainly, his performance this afternoon would belie his appearance this morning. and went right at the man. In fact, he butted him. Silvetti makes the quite. Silvetti making the quite. was jarred by the bull on his last cape pass, and Silvetti momentarily has taken over for him.
place to Lance. The bull continues to hit the padding on the, the horse, an indication of a very brave and fierce bull. Toro asks permission to kill the bull and now dedicates the bull to the crowd. Le brinde el toro al público. Moro takes him on from a distance. A right hand pass. Another right hand pass by Moro. Well by Moro. The bull is so active he hasn't given Moro a chance to stand still and perform his best pass, which he is now going to attempt to do. A left hand pass, a natural. Moro is the best exponent of the natural in Mexico, or for that matter, it can be called in the world. Too high. The bull chop. Now he is beginning to work him down. Another natural. Very good by Moro. Moro inching his way forward. Offers the bull the left side. The bull bobs his head. Then Moro has to move in again. Moro offers the left. The bull bobs his head and refuses to move forward. Moro offers the left a natural. The bull went high again. That one was good. A chest pass is being offered by Moro. He doesn't do it. Stands still, looks at his enemy. A right hand pass and the bull went right at Moro. The bull ignored the cloth. Another pass of death by Humberto Moro. As he stands flat footed as the bull moves past him. Bortomaro working his bull magnificently this afternoon. Bortomaro has the bull placed. He's ready for the kill and misses. Missed on his first attempt. As he sheathes the sword in the withers of the bull. An excellent kill by Umberto Moro on his second effort. We'll see if he cuts any ears. At least he'll get a tour of the arena. At least he'll get that. He had a very active bull, a fast bull, a dangerous and treacherous bull. He worked him beautifully and made an excellent kill on his second attempt. Two ears have been cut from the bull, being carried over to the far side, the shady side of the plaza here, the arena in Tijuana. Be presented to Humberto Moro. This is the crowd. Garcia calls to him, Bertha Morrow, for an interview as he comes up by the we Pereira. Get him over here. He's taking a turn around the ring, being acclaimed wildly as you can undoubtedly hear. He has cut two ears from a very difficult enemy, an enemy that would not follow the cape, that flung himself at the man frequently. Come 
tomorrow concludes his first tour of the arena. He holds the ears aloft to the crowd and salute. We'll see if he makes a second tour of the arena, and he will. Humberto, te queremos felicitar. Has toreado como todo un torero y has matado lo, lo que no se ha visto aquí en toda la temporada. ¿Cómo te sientes? Muy bien y ojalá y cuando vuelva aquí pueda tener la suerte de cuajar dos toros completos. Gracias, Moro. That was the voice of Humberto Moro speaking with the Plaza announcer Ray Garcia. He's now concluding his second tour of the arena as he circles the sands here in the pit at Tijuana. Throws the ears up to the crowd. the gold sword and the gold watches to the best matador, Banderilla and Picador. The next bull should be that of uh, Alfredo Leal. is a flute player. the ball away from Alfredo, but he escaped. Ray, wasn't he dangerous working in close to the Barrera that way on his knees? Well, he was uh, sort of doing it with it when the chips are down. That's the man of the boys. Alfredo Leal continues to work the ball in close passes up against the Barrera or the uh, boarded fence circling the arena. making the quite as Alfredo Leal observes the bull. Alfredo Leal will place his own Banderillos, the first matador of the afternoon to do so. 
Leal is going to place his own banderillas. He has dedicated the banderillas to the public. Leal sets himself to place the banderillas. Bull turns away. Leal slowly strides toward the bull. Wraps the banderillas together. Makes his move. The charge of the bull and places the beautiful. Alfredo Leal placing his own banderillas. Calls for his second pair of banderillas. Again he approaches. The bull poises for the charge. Two more beautifully placed by Alfredo Leal. The first four banderillas placed by Leal have all been spotted in an area no larger than, I'd say, three square inches up on the withers of the bull. Banderillas in half, in other words, shortening the, the distance from which he can work the bull. They're down to the length now, just a little better than a foot. He jams the banderillas against the barrero, the wooden wall, making sure that he can get the spikes in there. The bull grabs the cape of one of the odds assistants who bolts immediately over the barrero. Another assistant comes forth to. Antonio Velasquez is now out working with the cape. Antonio, the senior, Antonio Velasquez, the senior sword, has come out to help Leal. Leal is standing on the stirrup, the edge of the fence, the barrera, with the broken banderillas. The bull is a, is a flighty bull because it observes the motions of the people in the crowd and follows people that may be moving or walking making it much more difficult for the Matador to perform. The owl back up on the stirrup of the Barrero, on the wooden fence, holding the banderillas, which have been broken in half, waiting for an opportunity to work the bull over so he can place them. Now the bull moves toward him in a charge. He places them. One and two. When almost pressed against the Barrero. And he waves off to the crowd. He asks for two more. Another pair of banderillas. He missed. Two of them. Listen to the ovation for Alfredo Leal. Alfredo Leal calls for a new cape and some water. It's doused on the edges and the outer tip, the leading tip of the cape. He drags it in the sand. That weights it, keeps it from blowing so easily in the wind. And the bull attempts to leap over the barrier, but couldn't quite make it and fell back in. This bull has a lot of pounding and 
lot of force in the thing. the first set of banderillas. In order to do so, he must step in way up over the horns. He places himself, awaits the bull's charge, the crowd rises. The bull charges. Angel placed the banderillas, but one fell out. Again, he prepares to place a pair of banderillas. This time, he's not elected to break them in half, but we use regulation length. Angel, in the center of the arena, shades his eyes from the sun. The bull will come out of the shade. Angel faces into the sun. Now he moves into the shadows, slowly striding toward the bull. Placed a pair of banderillas by Miguel Angel. Miguel Angel has uh, ceded the banderilla placing to his uh, banderillero Simonillo, who hasn't had a chance at the gold watch. Now Simonillo is ready. Sights the bull. Simonillo is well in, along in his 50s. right side of his face is frozen from a horn he took through the mouth into the head. Senor Leal, si? were you satisfied with your bull? We talked to you at the sorte this morning. You thought you had a good bull. Were you well, satisfied uh, this afternoon? Not very much. I, I, I was a uh, hope. Very much more the, of the bull. But sometimes the bull uh, uh, are not uh, that looks like. Uh, in other words, they don't live up to expectations. Maybe I, if I can't speak in English well. But maybe you understand what I what I mean. I understand. Were you satisfied with the banderillas you placed? Yes. Not very much, but I am. I thought it was magnificent. Thank you. Put your glasses. Uh, Miguel Angel was knocked down momentarily. He appears he had his the knee, his left knee has been ripped, but he's going on with the fight. Anhal rolled about six times across the sand in the center of the arena. Left knee had been ripped by the horn of the bull. 
He accepts the ball again. A beautiful pass. Another pass. The crowd responds. But he's not the wrong. Anhal limps as he goes over to call for the sword. Kill. The moment of truth. Over the horns. And Anhal misses. Miguel Anhal misses on his first attempt to kill the bull. On the second attempt, he dispatches the sixth and final bull of the afternoon. The gold watch goes to Picador Arturo Carmona for his pick on the fifth bull. El reloj de oro va al banderillero Alejandro del Hierro por su par de banderías en el cuarto toro. The gold watch goes to Alejandro del Hierro for his banderías on the fourth bull. Humberto Moro, Humberto Moro por aclamación se lleva el trofeo. El público ha pedido Humberto Moro por aclamación se ha llevado el, el trofeo. the announcement of the awards, the gold sword, of course, going to for tomorrow. This afternoon's career is concluded here in the Plaza de Toros of Tijuana. Tomorrow makes a tour of the arena. The crowd responds. Gradually, they'll make their way out of the plaza into the cantinas and the bars of Tijuana to discuss further this afternoon's career. Meanwhile, many of the American citizens will get into their cars, join the slow moving queues of traffic heading back to the border and home. With the memories of another Corita and the exploits of such as Antonio Velasquez, Humberto Moro, Rafael Rodriguez, Alfredo Leal, Miguel Angel, and Juan Silvetti fresh in their memories. And so the Corita passes. The only work left is that for the butcher.